that that might not might not happen. Right. And I'm concerned about happen? it. That PE might not be restored even if okay, the Okay, but I think what's the override passes or doesn't pass, we're going to know very soon, well before the uh, academic year starts in September. And at that time, I think this would be an appropriate discussion or debate with the But the kids are picking courses now. I guess <laughs> that's they what They can't pick it, it now if it doesn't exist and the override hasn't passed. But we could, we could be surveying them to see what kind of interest there was in the course. Fine, we can do that. But that's, 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 that's what I'm asking for. That's, you know, that's, that's all I'm asking the, for. Uh, the, uh, hospital before the cat here. No, okay? we're trying to make an avenue for kids to learn. I know what you're trying to do. No. I know what you're trying to do. And, and, and again, once the override passes, I think that we can come back to this discussion, and I'm not necessarily uh, not supporting it either, and come back and at that point in time put a, put in place a mechanism for kids to select uh -huh. a course that they can't select now because it doesn't exist. Okay, that's all. And comments. I mean, I'm just getting cranky because I know we're going to go over these goals and it's just driving no, me crazy. <laughs> we have a new method of, we have a new method of reviewing the goals. Um, and policy readings. Can I, can I just comment on yes. this? Yes. Yeah, it, it, it's very clear. And then in the development of this pyramid, uh, certainly as you move up the steps and you get near the top, it's getting more and more tenuous. And I think we need to remember where we started from on this. We started with a finance planning team asking us to develop a budget that was $400,000 below the status quo. And as every week went by, things changed. And so that's how this found, this, that's how this pyramid was built. It was built, let's get to the status quo to maintain, then let's put in priority one, and there was quite a bit of discussion about what should go in first in priority one. And priority one did not include the restoration of some of these programs. It included, uh, after much debate, a focus on the special ed and the literacy, and it focused on class size issues at the high school. Then priority two, which was to deal primarily with putting back the programs in the arts, sufficiently to deal with um, some of the time issues, the time of the early dismissal and um, the time of the stifle. Right. All right, and and I've been very careful to say that just putting those back in is 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 there's not sufficient money. We're not putting back every single program, even at priority two. But the commitment is is to have students back as as fully as possible, and that's what we're working on right now. Just as much as it took literally three months to get ready for the opening of school in September. The principals are now going back and saying, how do we schedule this? If we're putting back music, putting back art, putting back physical education uh, in the middle school and, and the elementary school, is it done the same way that it was done before? And basically, how can you get, how can you weave some magic out of what is not fully restoring all of the programs? So it's going to take some time. And I think I have to be very careful uh, to be uh, make sure that the, the time is well spent by the principals in making those kinds of decisions. The third priority is dealing, if the override passes, with adding some more positions back. Uh, yes, one of them it says right on there is physical education. I'm suggesting today, right now, that it's not that we're not going to do that, but I anticipate a whole number of questions that have to be in place. And yes, we can go out tomorrow and survey juniors and seniors to see whether or not they should sign up for physical education. My concern is that there's still a lot of questions to be answered here. Another one of the positions under the override is another high school core academic teacher. Where will that best be needed? Is that going to be needed in, in social studies? Is it going to be needed in foreign language? Yes, I am concerned about where, which one should we be actually putting back in at this point? But you'll know after they we sign will up. Know af we will know some of that after we sign up, right. but also we will not know whether or not some of those staff members will have to be shifted. Who's going to go where? We're going to be moving people back around again. Who's going to be available and at what time? We will still be sharing staff in between buildings to try to make this work. Um, so that's, I'm not being hesitant in terms of of it going out and having students sign up for something, but I, I will caution uh, everyone is that it's going to take some real careful thinking 
uh, to try to make this work, even at priority one. Priority I understand. It's just they're going to sign up for classes. You go through that exercise of placing them in classes, and you can have to redo it all. Well, you have to sign up for PE and then not have it happen, and what, what do you right. do that? Well, that's, then you're just assigning 150 kids into more classes. As long as it's an option, it's okay. doable. Next we have uh, policy um, use of surveillance cameras. I, just one question. I didn't read through this. Um, Steve, had um, one of the things that you had asked was that we have something in here about the number of years that uh, the videos would be kept. David, was that addressed, do you know? Um, I've set this out for legal review, and I don't have that question answered. Okay. So should we, should we do this tonight, or should we wait for the legal opinion? Um, I would, I would wait. wait. Okay, so we will. May I suggest a minor sure. change in it anyway? Um, at the end of the first paragraph, the um, last sentence starts: "Such prohibitions, uh, such prohibition, does not preclude the use of audio recordings by law enforcement officials." I'd like to suggest that it say audio or other video recordings by law enforcement officials because it implies that it, uh, it, it is exhaustive of an area of video. So you're saying we need to add and other video recordings? Or other video after audio. So we're saying that law enforcement can use audio or video recordings if necessary. If they, if they, if they was a court order. Right. You know, need to put a video in a okay. classroom or something, okay. um, we can't have a policy that says it can't, it, can't it, do it doesn't it. happen. Right. Okay, so let's, um, we'll pass over this and, uh, until our next meeting. Dr. Schroeder has a, has it out for review with um, legal counsel, if that makes good sense. Um, we move review of goals, progress report of our goals. Make a lot of progress. Next. So move. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I do remember when we, when we put these goals together, um, I think we talked about trying to minimize the number of goals, and we still have a lot listed here, yeah. but having some key focus areas. And, and I, I couldn't find my notes or minutes from way back when we did that. Um, well, it was mostly budget. Budget, Get right. enough money so that we can put in the you know, restore the programs that we right. um I know I showed these, I just held them up to my husband to say, you know, do, do you think we should, do you want to look this over? Because he's just, he's got his, his fresh MBA and he loves he looking no. at procedural <laughs> stuff. He did, he looked at it and the first thing out of his mouth was, that's too many. Yes. You're never going to be able to get it all done in the amount of time that you want to get it done and you're not going to be able to focus your energies enough to accomplish all the things on there. So, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, definitely keep working the pair down and prioritize more. That means making, you know, some of the goals a little more general. <laughs> That's okay with me, rather yes. than, you know, have Dr. Trojan belong to 27 different, you know, professional societies. Yeah, I don't think that's a necessary goal. That's done and done. You know. And that we know he's going to do that because he's committed to right. doing that. Right. Steve, you have a comment? Um, as I look through, there are several areas which either have not been initiated or have been on the agenda for more than one year. Right. <laughs> and, and they actually form a cluster. Um, they have to do with things like academic progress and assessment right. from elementary to secondary uh, with length of school day or school start times with homework with um, uh, basically with the kinds of things that a strategic plan at this point needs to address. I think if you look at them as a whole it's time to at least ask if we need to be uh, having a new vision of what the school day 
is like and what the school, uh, the life of the school is. Um, there was a, an article in a, and I don't even remember where I read it now, I just read it recently too, um, about a school district that has extended its school day to 430 and uh, there are things being done within the school day now and there are more, it's, it's a, it was a middle school here in the state, but there are more act, um, extracurricular activities because they're done during the day and they don't have, the students don't have to worry about getting home. And there's a whole host of things like that that one can uh, consider if one is willing to revision the, the school day. And I think that's really the work of a strategic planning uh, process. So I, uh, as I uh, approach the end of my tenure here, uh, I'm really encouraging, not because I'm looking for something else to do, but because uh, I think it's time that we really push for a new strategic planning. I think David is um, on board with that, because we've discussed this uh, previously. Um, and Steve's right, a lot of these a lot of these individual things that either are not initiated or have been in progress for uh, quite some time fit nicely into a strategic plan. Um, the question, the question I have, and I guess I'll, I'll ask, I could ask Jerry or I could ask Dr. Troden, um, you know, should we at least go through these one by one tonight? Um, actually, actually, I think you're right, Bob. I think you did a pretty good job of pairing these down a little bit, in spite of what Nicole says. But they probably could be pared down even more. But, you know, well, they go on we've, the we've actually, we've actually uh, accomplished quite a few, I mean, between the yeah. superintendent's goals and school committee's goals. We've actually completed some. Yes. Maybe didn't. And I think, and I think I do want to go through those, but yeah. we can, I think we can go through it quickly. Yeah. You know, I and I, so. I think that when Nicole, if you look at the policy, so the, we have four four areas of, of focus: policy, budget, communication, and strategic planning. I think policy is, is one of the areas that troubles me because we have 13, 13 different items working right now, and I guess we could look at them and say every one of these is important, but should we start structuring those and taking four of them and say? Let's do these four this year. I mean, can, can we can we label those four as the four most important? Or as Steve says, do they roll into a new strategic plan? I guess I guess I'd like David's input on that too. Um, you know, some of the things on policy like offsite independent study. How does that roll into a strategic plan? Or the uh, reporting academic. You know, what, how are we reporting um, academic programs? What are what the whole report card issue? Um, how do those become? Do they stay individual goals, or do they get rolled into into a new plan? I think these are just the policies around those practices, and I think that the policy subcommittee would be the ones that would say, we'll come up with four this year and right. four next year. But that takes a really structured, active policy subcommittee to right. identify them and then reach their goal. And, 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 I, and I think that's what, I, what I'd like to see, because when you, we, we keep what we do is we have 11 and we'll add two or three more on right, and without, then taking, any without taking any off the top. And I think, you know, the policy subcommittee will be reconstructed next year, all the subcommittees will. And I think if you look at the policy one, I think that's that's one of the goals we should have is to set priorities as right. to as to what, um, you know, what what's on top and I mean, they're all important, but to, to different levels of importance. Right, plus it, you know, it makes it easier to get it done when you've got four things to focus on. You're not trying to prioritize and develop them at the same time. You know, get the priorities down, work on those four. Makes it easier to, you know, know what you're doing. So do you want to go through these individually or? I mean, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just. Could I ask that we skip the, uh, all the activities, you know, just go over the objectives right. and just highlight what we yes. what we yeah. have completed, maybe. And I think I'll say on policy, and these are the school committee goals now, we have a lot of things um, that are ongoing or, or in progress. Um, and, and that's when I talk about we should set some priorities, you know. We all might have different priorities, and, and I think Mrs. Bach is right. The policy subcommittee should put those, but I think the school committee should, we should also have a look at those and say, well, wait a minute. One of a couple of us might think, you know, this policy on gifted and talented students is something that we should 
you know, move forward on versus 